as many as. Look at somebody and say, as many as. Now watch this. That means that on your road, <laughs> might not be all of you. Might be just you. Or might not be none of you. But as many as. And see, it depends on who believes. Oh, let, let me tell you, I'll tell you, like my grandma, you say, everybody talk about heaven ain't no. Amen. God bless you today, beloved. I'm so glad to see you. I'm so glad that a little bit of water didn't keep you home. Amen. I believe that the God we serve is ruler over the water and the sunshine. Amen. So I'm so glad to see each and every one of you on this morning. And despite little bit of adversity getting here. I'm, I'm here to tell you this morning that there is a blessing in the pressing. Amen. 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 So greater harvest, what time is it? Harvest time. It is harvest time. What kind of preacher do you have? Bible-based preacher. Well, how do you worship him? In spirit and in truth. Well, how do y'all feel? Blessed and highly favored. Amen. Would you rest on your feet? We're going to read from uh, the Gospel of John. Uh, Deacon Daly read so eloquently verses 1 through 10. We're going to pick up where he left off. I'm going to read. We're going to read together 10 through 14. Amen. John, first chapter. First chapter of John. Very first chapter of John. We're going to begin reading at verse 10 and we will conclude at verse 14. Beloved, when you have it, say, I got it, preacher. I got it, preacher. And I'm Bible ready. I'm Bible ready. Amen. Let's read the word of God together. And the Bible says, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. That is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated in the presence of God. And beloved, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we come once again to uh, say thank you, Father God, for the strength to hand stand again here behind this sacred desk. Father God, we worship you and we thank you, Father God, for this opportunity that you have given us. Father God, we just pray that you would hide me behind the cross, Father God. Allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in your sight. I pray, Father God, today that you would turn this place into sacred space. Father God, let the words that these, your people here, Father God, open up their hearts and minds so that they apply them to their lives. So that somebody, Father God, when they leave this place, leaves better than when they came. These things we pray in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Now on today, beloved, with the power of God and the truth of Jesus Christ and being led by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to talk to you for just a few moments from the subject or thought, love without limits. Amen. Love without limits. Now, 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 as a subtopic, I'm, I'm just going to put this out there. Subtopic. Uh, can you live with me and still love me? Mm -hmm. Amen. Some people just love you from afar. Amen. 
<laughs> and love you with everyday love. Amen. So, beloved, as of last Wednesday, we are officially in the Lenten season. Last Wednesday was Ash Wednesday. We're going to be preaching uh, going forward about the life, death, and burial and resurrection of the Christ. And, and we're going to let the Lord lead us, but we're going to focus on the Gospel of John while we preach and teach during this season. I, I want to ask you a question, beloved. Have you ever wondered why there are four versions of books detailing the life of Christ? Has anybody ever wondered that? Have you ever thought, why couldn't they just condense them all into one book and make it easier to read? Have you ever thought, why wasn't Matthew's version good enough? How come Mark wasn't good enough? How come Luke or John wasn't good enough? Why do we need all four Gospels? Have you ever thought that if I just learned one Gospel real well, uh, I'll know the other three too? Well, beloved, let me, let me help you today. I'll look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. you came on the right Sunday. What we've got to realize, beloved, is that the Bible is not really a book. It's more like a library. There's 40 different authors who wrote independently over a period of 1,400 years. And none of them knew that they were writing the Bible. And even though there's 40 different authors, there is only one divine editor. And the beauty of of the Bible is that even with all of the variety, there's still unity. And if you're ever so inclined, beloved, take the time to read Genesis 1 through 3, and then go to Revelation 20 and 22. Now, see, I, I, I used to read, one, back then I used to read, I used to love to read, I used to read books, I read all James Baldwin, I read, read all of the uh, Black Art, Richard Wright, you know, Iceberg Slam, and Howard Street, I read all of those books, and what I would do sometimes is I would start reading, and if if the, the book kind of uh, encompassed my my intellect and my, I was really into it, then sometimes I would read the beginning and then skip to the back. Ooh. See how it ended up. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> then I'd go back and read it all, but I just, sometimes I just be so I was, I gotta figure out what happened. So if you're ever so inclined, read Genesis 1 through 3 and then go to Revelation 20 and 22. And it's like the same writer wrote them. They're, they're seamless. They merge right together. But they were written 1,400 years apart by two men living in distinctly different eras and circumstances. And as our president would like to say, with no collusion. <laughs> <laughs> he, he loved to say that. Now that's his favorite word. Yeah. President ain't gonna cross the street. Hey, there ain't no collusion. <laughs> now, the reason why there are four gospels in the New Testament discussing the same man over the same period of time is this. Can I teach Bible? Yeah. Yeah. See, every book in the Bible is written with a purpose and with a target audience. And when it came to the life of Christ, upon his resurrection and his ascension. The apostles initially believed that Jesus was coming back in their lifetime. So initially they thought that there was really no need for them to write an account of the life of Christ. Uh, they originally were sharing their story or the story of Christ orally to the people. And when it became clear that, that, that the return of Christ or the second coming was not going to be in their lifetimes, then they knew that they had to write down and record his miracles and the things that he did so the generations to come would know who Jesus was and what he did. And, and just for your edification, the first gospel was marked and it was written 30 years after the crucifixion of Christ. Mark doesn't appear first in, in the New Testament, but it was the first gospel written. And it was written primarily for the Greeks. See, Mark focuses just on what Jesus did is it's an action book. Mark said, Jesus went here and did that. Jesus went here and did that. Then Jesus did this. See, Mark didn't really focus on what Jesus said, just what he did. 
Then Matthew came along and he wrote his gospel and he, he wrote it for the Jews to provide proof to the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah that they had been waiting for. And, and you can tell this is true because Matthew includes more Old Testament quotes than the other gospels combined. Then along comes Luke, he writes his gospel and he writes it shortly after Matthew and it's, it's a historical account for all the people, and it was written to establish believers in the teachings of Christ. Then there's the book of John. The gospel of John is different. It was the last gospel written. Now the other three gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they're called synoptic gospels. They're very similar because they look at Christ uh, from the outside. They cover the same events and the same miracles. But the Gospel of John looks at Christ from the inside. And it's written with the intention of proving the divinity of Jesus Christ. John uh, does not really duplicate the description of the miracles that appear in the Synoptic Gospels. And there's only, if you notice in the Gospel of John, there's only seven miracles mentioned. And five of them don't appear in the Synoptic Gospels. We can tell by the very first verse of John's gospel that he has a specific goal in his writing. You see, Matthew begins, traces Jesus' lineage all the way back to Abraham. Mark begins his book with Jesus' baptism. And then Luke begins his at Jesus' birth. But John goes all the way back and he begins his account with the same words, the same uh, sentence that we see in the beginning of the book of Genesis. In the beginning. And John actually predates Genesis because John goes back to before creation. And John from that point forward sets out to prove that Jesus is the second figure in the Godhead. The Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So when we look at the text with understanding what John is trying to accomplish in his writing... It should allow us to have a different perspective when we examine the gospel of John or the good news of John that he presents to us, which brings us to the text. Beloved, the Spirit spoke to me, and, and, and I, and I want to I wanna look at this scripture from a unique angle, if you don't mind. Rather than we be readers of the text and interpreters of the text, I want us today to try to live this text. Amen? Amen. Now, now, this portion of scripture is applicable to our lives in such a way that it should make us think of a situation where we were in the same circumstance that the gospel of John is describing that Jesus is in. Now, before you ask, the pastor lost his mind <laughs> comparing you and your life to the life of the Prince of Peace. Notice that I didn't say that you would react how Jesus did. Or you would handle yourself perfectly the way that Jesus did. But beloved, I, I know I'm right about it. Some of us have been tried. Some of us have been mistreated. Some of us have been misunderstood just like Jesus. Oh, we can go from pew to pew, beloved. And if it's not you, then somebody on your row can remember when they were misunderstood. And, and the world didn't know what they were capable of. Preach, Pastor. There's somebody in here who the world didn't know. There, there's somebody in here who the world thought was going to give up. And there, there's somebody in here who the enemy thought he could beat. And there's somebody in here who's been given two chances to make it. Those chances are called slim and none. But because the world didn't know you, they didn't know what you were capable of. I, I want to ask today, have you been in a situation or a circumstance where somebody did something or said something that made you think there ain't no way that you know me? Because if you knew me, you'd know better than to treat me like that. If you knew me, you'd know better than to think that I wasn't going to do what God asked me to do. If you knew me, you'd know about my faith. If you knew me, you'd know I was more than a conqueror. 
you knew me, you would know that I know I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And the thing that will blow your mind is the same person that you helped get through the storm expects you to surrender in your storm. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but, but somebody in this house of prayer came here today because God gave you the strength to get through the go-through. And even when your friends acted like uh, uh, they didn't know you when you needed them the most, but because you knew that God was able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that you can ask or think, you kept the faith and finished the race. Because you knew that no weapon formed against you should prosper. You pressed on towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of Jesus Christ. And if that's your testimony, then I'm going to let you know today you're not alone. You can apply the text that we read to your life. That's why verse 10 says, he was in the world and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. Watch this. The text is saying the same people Jesus made, the same people whom Jesus created, rejected him. Don't forget now, this gospel goes all the way back to creation. And we know that Jesus was with God from the beginning and even before the creation. And that's why in our Bible, if you read your Bible in the book of Genesis, the Bible says, let us make man in our image. So Jesus was there from the beginning. And those people who Jesus came back to save, when he came down through 42 generations for the purpose of saving those souls, those same folks acted like they didn't know him. And the reason why I wanted you to put yourself in Jesus' sandals for a moment is because, see, you should appreciate the love without limits that Jesus showed in his life that ended up in sacrifice. I don't know about you today, but I'm glad that Jesus was divine and not human. See, because a man who was not divine will react different than Jesus did. Now, now, now some of the younger members know what I'm talking about. Because some of you would react differently, and here's how I mean, here's how I explain it to you. Uh, some of the young members, now, now y'all that's over seventy, maybe you can't relate to this, but <laughs> sixty-five and under. I know you heard Beyonce sing "Irreplaceable." You must not know about me. You must not. I can get another you in a minute. <laughs> and, and, and beloved, that's what Jesus could have said. You acting like you don't know me. I can get another you in a minute. I can do another flood. I can send a fire. I can start all of this thing all over. Amen. 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 Tell your friends that Pastor Porter Beyonce in the pool. <laughs> Bible says, verse 11, he came into his own and his own received him not. I'm not sure what it feel worse, beloved, than coming to your own people and getting rejected. I don't know what would hurt worse, beloved, than having the people that you love and connected to shut you out of their lives. Oh, I, I, I'm here to tell you today, I, I don't know how it could be worse when you're connected and when you have power, and the people that you have connected to and have power for don't want to accept you. And that's what happens, beloved, when our lives are so busy, when we have so much going on that we decide we can't worship. We decide we can't pray. We don't have time to praise. We don't have time to study God's word. And we began to put things before God. Now, beloved, God is love, and, and when we do these things, we start to prioritize 
what God has given us instead of prioritizing our relationship with him. Let me help you with scripture. The Bible says, he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, 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 if we only make time for him and we don't have nothing else to do and we don't have nothing else on our plate, then we're not receiving him and we're not seeking him. We are, in effect, avoiding him. The Bible says, seek ye first. Kingdom, heaven, and all these things will be added unto you. But by being too busy with the things of the world, you're disqualifying yourself from the things that God will add to you if you're putting him first. I know I'm preaching right. Love without limits does not avoid, it seeks. It seeks because it believes. And because love without limits believes, it receives. Did y'all catch that? Now watch this. In the Gospel of John, the word believe appears 98 times. And the reason why it appears 98 times is because it's that important. See, if you don't believe, you can't be saved. That's why the scripture says, for God so loved the world, you know it, you know it by heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, what? Believe. Whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting See, when you believe, that's when you receive. So in the text, it's in the text we read, verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. He didn't give the power to non-believers. The power that Jesus gives is the inheritance of God. Eternal life is your inheritance. If you're found to be a true believer in God and in Jesus Christ, his son, then you have an inheritance. And the beautiful thing, beautiful thing about inheritance, Brother Duke says, uh, it's not something that you earn. Beautiful thing, Dean Daly is, it's a gift. It's given to you. God blesses you with eternal life because he loves you, first lady. Look at somebody and say love without limits. Love. It's not because you deserve it, not because you've been so good, but in spite of your flaws and your faults. God gives you grace and mercy because he loves you without limits. Now, now when we move, when we look at verse 12, it's a shout in verse 12 because it tells us something that verse 11 omits. Now, I hope you still have your Bibles out. Because if you only read verse 11 and you don't read verse 12, you'll think that God did what man would do. It seems like by reading verse 11 that nobody received Jesus. Here's what it says. Nobody came. Nobody said, here's what it says. He came unto his own and his own received him not. See, see, but, but see, verse 12 caused the faithful to let out a howl of praise because three little words. The text says, but, three little words, as many as, y'all don't understand, y'all didn't get the shout yet, as many as, look at somebody and say, as many as, as, many as. now watch this, that means that on your road, <laughs> might not be all of you, might be just you, or might not be none of you. But as many as. See, see, it depends on who believes. I'll let, let me tell you, I'll tell you like my grandma used to say, everybody talking about heaven ain't going. <laughs> Bible says, because if unless you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will not be saved. Can I, can I preach on as many as? Can I preach on that? See, when the text says as many as, it's not talking about a certain number. It's not talking about a certain race or a certain creed or color. As many as means those who are willing, those who confess, those who believe. It's not talking about the rich. 
It's not talking about the smart. It's not talking about folks who look saved. But as many as means those who have been through some storms and still believe. Those who have been through some trials and still believe. Those who have been broke and still believe. Those who've had to bear a cross and still believe. Those who've had some burdens and still believe. Those who've been sick and still believe. Those who've had disease in their body but still believe. Those who fell off but still believe. Those who've been poor and needy but still. As many as. Mm. Can I go just a little bit deeper, church? Verse 13 explains who as many as is. It says, which were born. I feel like preaching. See, somebody missed their shout already. Which was born doesn't mean who birthed you. Bible not talk about mama or daddy. The text says, not of blood. So you can't be born into salvation. Don't matter how holy mama was or how sanctified daddy was. Because your parents' blood is not good enough to get you the inheritance. Only the blood of Jesus. Because there's power in the blood. Wonders work in power. Not by blood. Yes. Yes. Then the text says, nor of the will of flesh. Mm. See, see, you're not included in the as many as just because you desire to be. Don't mean, it don't matter how bad you want it in your life. You still have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. There's a whole lot of folks who want to go to heaven, but they don't want to change the way that they live to get there. If you read the text with understanding, you'll connect the dots and you'll realize that what you want and what God gives you depends on if you believe. Because if you don't believe, you won't receive. Can I go just a little bit deeper? Now, now, now the text reveals a truth that hurts. But we need to know it. Sometimes it's better to hear the truth and hurt than not to know the truth and get hurt later. Can I tell you the truth right now? Watch well, this. The text says, nor of the will of man. What that simply means is whoever is living right is going to hell. Don't matter who wants you to go to heaven. If you're not living a life of a believer and if you have not confessed and believed, you're not going to be. Can I, I got to break this down a little bit more. I got to break it down because somebody missing their shout. See, see just because mommy wants you to be in heaven that don't mean you going. Just because daddy was on the digging board, that don't get you in. Just because your brother or your sister tied, they was on the usher board, they worked in the kitchen, they sang in the choir, that don't get you in either. Unless you are born again, you can't be saved. Unless you believe for yourself. You can't be in the as many as number. Is there, let me ask you something. Is there anybody in here right now who has an as many as praise? If you've got an as many as praise, turn to somebody and say, count me in. I'm in that number, the as many as number. I'm in that number. See, because when you're in that number, that means you believe. That means you've been baptized. That means you've confessed. That means you've endured. That means God has 
has a purpose on your life and it's just for you. That means that you've got love without limits on your life. And because God has called you his child, you're entitled to an inheritance. As many as. Mm. See, see, that, that don't mean you can go down the road and count how many is in here. Uh uh. Don't mean you can go to mega church with 5,000 members and think heaven gonna be crowded. As many as means there's a requirement. There's some conditions you got to make. Some folk think they can get a license and they blind. Some requirements you got to meet. That brings us to our focal verse. Highlight of the lesson. Bible says, and the word, verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory, the glory as of the only begotten Son, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Let me read that again. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. One more time, Mr. Chuck. And the word was made flesh. And did what? Dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Two reasons why we can shout about the revelation in the 14th verse. See, John explains to us that Jesus is divine and he's God in the flesh. Now, now watch this. This point number one, because he's divine and God in the flesh, he knows all things. He knows all things. So it makes sense to know that he would know he would not be received by most. He knew that he was going to be betrayed. He knew he was going to have to die on Calvary's cross. He knew that the majority of the people he came to save wouldn't know him. He knew he was going to be lied on. He knew he was going to be beaten. He knew he was going to be misunderstood. And he knew what it would take to save this sinful world. He knew all of these things. Here's where the shout is. Point number two, but he came anyway. That's love without limits. Even though he knew he's going to be rejected and disrespected. Even though he knew that his closest friends were going to abandon him. And even though he knew that there was only going to be a faithful few. He came anyway. He decided to die for a sinner like me. Not because I, I deserved it. Not because I would love him. But because he loved me without limits. He came because I didn't know better. I didn't even know what was best for me. He came in spite of me. Look at somebody and say he came anyway. He came because he loved us without limits. Let, 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 me, let me explain. See, see that now there's one more point. Let me explain this to you. And, and, and let, me, let me tell you something like back, I was a kid in 1972. My mother and my stepfather bought a house in North York. Back then, it was all Italians. I ain't got nothing against Italians. Just telling you the facts. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, after a few months after we had moved in, my, 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 no, 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 my, my stepfather left my mother. And what was worked out, the mortgage that was worked out for two incomes, now only had one. And, and beloved, if you, if you never get to this circumstance, 
I'm going to let you know something. Bank don't care about your circumstances. You sign that contract, you're going to pay that mortgage. You figure it out. Amen. Preach, Pastor, preach. So that meant that my mother had to struggle to pay all the bills and the mortgage, keep clothes, food, or do all of those things. And, and what would happen is I'd be able to look at Italian boys and we'd be, we'd be playing and they say, hey, let's order a pizza. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody chip in $5. And they go to their house, run out with $5. They could go there, they could run out with $5. And then I'd go to my house, my mother said, boy, I got food in the refrigerator. <laughs> 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 You better find, you better, you want some beef? Yeah, look, just get you some bread, put some ketchup on it, <laughs> put a little cheese on it, say amen. <laughs> so I had to come back. I didn't have the five dollars. And, and when I was 12, I thought, my mother was just cheap. <laughs> That's what I thought. I'm keeping it real, because 12 year olds don't understand they don't understand. I didn't understand. But when I got a job and had bills, I understood. And, and the reason why I, I, I told you that is because the disciples walked with Jesus for three years. Yet they didn't understand how much he loved them until they had to start preaching and teaching what he taught them. You see, they became persecuted as he was. Then they could understand. Y'all missing it. See, your child is not going to understand why you can't buy them a slice of pizza, why you can't buy them the part of the pizza until they have kids asking for pizza when they don't have the money. The apostles, the disciples, they learned to love Jesus more after his death, his burial and resurrection than they did when they were walking with him because they couldn't even understand some of the instructions that he was giving them. They didn't understand it until after